the lesson that we're going to be referring to in the book. We're going to talk about the seven mechanical means. So I'm going to be going over techniques. You want to go to page 75, lesson 69. If you don't have the book, but you want to get it, then that's just coming up there but the links are in the video description as well today guys so the seven techniques that we need to develop as part of our strategies and tactics for soloing for your improvisation if you if oh hang on i nearly knocked my cup of tea over in my very snazzy Ricky's guitar pentatonics mug. We need these tactics if we are learning solos. So if you're learning a solo, then you need to be able to replicate those things. So we're gonna go over what I think are the seven mechanical means. The way I see these seven mechanical means is it's how you move from one note to another. If you think about a piano, when you play a note and then another note, there's certain things that piano can't do that only guitar can do. And the guitar can sound very, very human. I think that makes sense because the way I see music is it's the language of emotion. You're putting that emotional thing that you have in your head and then pulling it out through your fingertips and then out of your guitar and that way you can express yourself and how cool is that if you can't express yourself verbally with words sometimes all you need to do is pick this up and express yourself with this let's get into the first one and that is using this thing pick my pick so i use jim dunlop jazz 3 xls i've just stuck with them for ages but guitar tone Dialed in here, I'm using my Yamaha THR 10 through the USB thing. It's a wonderful bit of kit, nice and simple. I am sporting Yamaha today, that's my garb. Here we go. The first one is picking. The pick is probably the most efficient way to do this. When it comes to picking, I use the pick in this finger and I use these two fingers as well. I don't really use my pinky. So when I pick, that's what I do. I know some of you guys out there don't get on with this, but what I want you to do is I want you to consider the texture that a pick makes on the string, the timbre of the string. I'm gonna play a little B minor pentatonic here. Box one at the seventh fret. If you look and you listen, the attack of the pick, there's a sound at the front of the notes, yes? So, that's really important to notice and observe. And it's quite a sharp sound. Now the easiest way to move from one note to another is picking. I can play just downstrokes, and this is how I would recommend you start. Just down strokes getting used to that sort of thing but then what you want to do is when you move in from one note to the other then it would be great to integrate down and up now there's a ton of information about picking out there and i think the guy that really has it all nailed scientifically is a guy called Troy Grady. You just look him up. It's all about how to pick fast, but you've got to set up the fundamentals. Another YouTuber that I greatly admire is Ben Ella. He does a thing on picking as well. And it's worth looking at that stuff if you want to get really deep into it. But really it's about striking the pick, but focusing on the quality of the sound when you do it. The thickness of the pick is going to make a difference. The Jazz 3 here is very stiff. I like that. I've grown accustomed to being able to control that, whether I'm playing soft or hard. This is the strummer's pick. Yeah, so this one is a 0.38 mil Jim Dunlop USA Nylon. Now this one is wafer thin and it bends. So this isn't gonna be good for doing your solos with. It's not gonna give you the resistance. It will slow you down as well, moving from one note to the other. So the thickness of your picks is really, really important. When I put together these custom ones here, these are my custom guitar picks. These are kind of miscellaneous. They've got a bit of flex, but they've got a really sharp point. I wanted the pointiness of a Jazz 3 
there so put that in this works great on acoustic as well for single note stuff for me though i've got so used to that once you find the pick that works for you then it's okay to stick with it there are people out there that don't actually use a pick rest in peace jeff beck he played using fingers if you're going to use fingers then you need to get this kind of approach do you know how the koreans do love hearts they go like that it's meant to be a love heart well that is how you want to set yourself up for playing one note to the next if you're not going to use a pick the cool thing is you can split these apart and the finger can move to the next string while the thumb is chasing it down. Mark Knopfler, yeah, there we go. Also, there's a guy called Mateus Mancuso, absolute monster, mind-blowing technique, and that's fingers. So there is a way around it. You don't have to use a pick, but generally, you'll find that people that use fingers have put on acrylic nails. Some don't because their nails are thick enough, but it will wear away at your fingernails. So you've got to be mindful of that because that's going to determine the tone that you get out of the guitar. And I think that's really, really important because tone is one of those things that you really need to develop. I don't mean tone from your guitar amp and I don't mean the kind of woods that your guitar is made of. Tone that comes out of the fingers. So I just want you to be mindful because the way that you want your voice to come out of the instrument, the tone, the texture, the timbre, those things are important, the three T's. We want to make sure that we get that so it feels authentic and it's really you. But the thing is, where the tire meets the tarmac, it's one note, then another. There is an aggressive sound to this, and I'll talk about this when we've gone over the techniques. You can be really explicit about how you are making your sounds. If you want it to sound gentle, then you might switch the technique. So you can adapt these seven techniques so that you can properly convey the emotion that you want to do. I see those as two polar opposites. So you've got the sharp and you've got soft sounds. <laughs> There's a lot of attack to that. If you look at somebody like Zach Wilde, Zach Wilde is an alternate picker. It's all picking. And when he picks, it sounds aggressive. So picking is aggressive. It's a sharp technique. You can play gentle with the plectrum too, but you have to think about it. In its natural way is there's a lot more attack in it. So what we've got is we've got the picking. I'm agnostic, if you can use your fingers, use your fingers, but be aware that it's gonna have a different sound, different tone, a different texture and a different timbre. The next technique is just to counter this idea of sharpness, bringing in this soft technique. And the soft technique is the one that sounds really human, and this is. 